Epic and Loud Adventures! Hello everybody, welcome to another episode on our channel. Today I'm going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart. Growing your own food. Yeah, it's January, it's a little bit early, but there are some plants that I want to get a head start on because in this climate, it's kind of hard to get them to fruit as much as they would in a more temperate climate, let's just say that. So today, I'm going to go through the steps that I would go through to get things started from seed. Let's get into it. So these trays are, at, are 10, 20 trays, and I have two different sizes that I'm using today. Since I'm only doing a handful of seeds today, it, so anytime you wanna start growing your, your plants from seed, make sure to uh, take out the right growing medium. I go with ProMix this big bale right here. But this is the mycorrhizal fungi bit choice. It's a mixture of peat moss and coca core, as well as other things like perlite and uh, things to make it nice and soft and fluffy. I like to grab as much as I think I'm going to need. So I fill up my bowl, break it up a little bit. I'm gonna get it moist. Seed starting material like this tends to absorb water really, really well. It's going to require a certain amount of water. You want a damp material, not a soaking wet material. Some people will just rub it over the top and you'll have a little bit of extra in the bottom. But you can also just grab it like this. Just kind of rub it in there. And we're gonna to continue to do that. So now that we've moistened our soil, um, I'm actually going to use this tray for my my microgreens. I'm going to be growing uh, Russian red or ragged jack kale microgreens. They usually stay pretty tender and are usually harvested at a smaller size. I'm using these because I actually got a free packet from Baker Creek. Now what we want to do is actually uh, sprinkle a little bit more soil on top so it's protected from the from the lights and then give it a little spritz of moisture and we're just giving it enough soil to, to cover the top we're not trying to add another quarter inch or anything like that just moistening the top because the rest of it is actually already damp so you're not trying to add a bunch more water just enough to keep it cool on the top. And let it grow. Now because it's January, I want to make sure that all of my nightshades, meaning tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, are ready for when the weather is above 55 on a regular basis. And because some of them take a little bit longer to germinate and or a little bit longer to get to the size that I want before I can put them out there or even into the greenhouse, uh, I'm going to start them now. So that way, potentially, I'll have most of them germinated around Groundhog's Day, which is a good time to start if you're here in Western Washington. If you think I'm a little crazy for starting that early, make sure to comment below and state your opinions and maybe I'll use your ideas next time. True Black Brandywine from Baker Creek Seeds. These are one of my favorite tomatoes I've ever grown. Um, they were so full of natural sugar. For my cherry tomato this year, I've gone with a blue cream berry. I've never grown this tomato. I like to mix it up at least one new variety every year, see what I like best. For peppers this year, well, for hot peppers in particular, but I have peach habaneros as well as chocolate habaneros. Now, if this is a little bit spicy, uh, I would highly recommend, if you like a little bit of spice so you don't want to kill yourself, uh, classic Thai hot, ch hot chilies. Now, these are hot, but they're not unbearable. 
and these are something that we use on a regular basis. I'm also going to grow a mild jalapeno. Granted, I'm growing the mild jalapenos because it's the only seeds that I have, but these are called Tam jalapenos. It's almost like almost heatless, but not quite. Pretty close to being heatless. So the remainder of the seeds I've chosen for uh, this first planting of the of the season. I'm actually going to grow cabbage for the first time, hopefully successfully. It recommends starting starting between January 19th and February 2nd. I'm also going to start my basil indoors because I got this really interesting, really large noom noom basil. It's an African basil, uh, and the leaves are ginormous. Like they're they're big, big boys. I'm going to start my nasturtiums early this year, and I can put them outside and hang them all along uh, the house, and even put some near the garden. That'd be really nice cauliflower, this is a snowball variety, as well as two seeds from Wanderlust Nursery in West Seattle. I have their beef and onion plant, also called the Toon Leaf. It's from China and it literally tastes like you're eating beef, but it's in a leaf. Uh, I'm also growing the blue sausage tree or dead man's fingers. It's a really weird looking fruit if you look it up on YouTube or on Google, you'll see it. Let's get started with these seeds. So I'm gonna start with the plants that are gonna take the longest, which are gonna be my peppers and my tomatoes. The trick here is taking something like a Sharpie or a smaller pen. And in fact, I usually just use whatever I'm going to use to write my labels. Um, and you make a little divot into each individual one, like so. Just enough room for a seed or two, okay. And then I do a little bit of division in my mind, depending on how many I want for each plant. This one's pretty easy. I'm just gonna go like that, and then I'll divide these two up between these guys. Like so. Pop this guy open. So I usually go at least two seeds, just to ensure germination. These are really small seeds. I don't know if you can see that, but they're really small seeds. So you kinda gotta take it easy. It's okay if you don't end up using them all, you can always save them for the next year. They just have a slightly lower germination rate, as long as you keep your seeds cool throughout the year. I have this bundle of labels. Black. Toms. And I'll set them right there. Just repeat the process. So it's been around three days. Um, I don't know if I pointed this out, but these are actually really inexpensive LED strip lights. They're full spectrum LED. I got them from Wally World. Granted, these are probably not the best lights you can buy, but it's what I could afford at the time when I started my farm back in 2019. And as you can see, I'm already having little sprouts. Those are all the cabbages and even some cauliflower. And in the back are microgreens. There's the update. Okay, so it's been about a month, and it's kind of crazy outside. So instead of starting some of the greens and hardier uh, produce that I actually started, which aren't actually quite as ready as I thought they would be by now, but if you can see, I have at least two trays of plants that are in desperate need of uh, transplanting into something a bit bigger. So I have these two inch pots, two inch by four inch deep, and I'm gonna start transferring these over. These are some of the other ones. Before. You can see I added a couple others, as well as I picked up a lemon tree, which was fine outside, but it's a, it's snowing. It's a, it's been a bit of, of a, of a crazy month. Obviously we, uh, we had a kid. So I actually chose a potting soil I don't normally use. I went with Edna's Best. It's from E.B. Stone, which is a Northwest brand. So the reason I decided to repot these, one, obviously they're getting pretty big, so they probably need some room to grow. But if you can see, I'm gonna pull one of these guys out. They're completely coated in roots, which means they're they're definitely running out of space. Now they've had a little bit of a extra nutrients. One, because it's a mycorrhizal uh, soil starter, which means it has lots of mushroom growth in it. But two, I also gave it a little bit of plant food for some of the bigger plants. My technique when repotting plants is I put a nice thick layer at the bottom, like so. And then I stick the, the repotted plant in there and then make sure to get the size and a little bit on top. Now this 
is actually flowers. And I grow specific flowers to take care of pests in the garden. This is what's called an orchid nasturtium. It's going to have characteristics of an orchid, which will protect the garden from aphid attack because aphids love nasturtiums, as well as humans do. We tend to use them a lot in restaurants. Next, because I'm crazy and I decided to plant these way too early, uh, I'm going to be transferring my squash plants. I have two different varieties. One is a zucchini style squash. It's called a Fort Hood. Fort, Fort Hood, right? This is an experimental uh, delicata style squash. It's a little bit harder of a squash. It's called a Tetra Squash from Row 7 Seeds. They have a lot of really unique products. I highly recommend them. Same process, except if you can, get a little bit bigger pot. If not, that's okay. It just gives them a little bit of breathing room. These are slightly bigger, so we'll go with these. Make sure when you have multiple varieties of the same kind of plant to give, give it a label, so that way you don't put it in the wrong spot in the garden later on. You can use popsicle sticks, but I like these little white cards. Also, when writing your, your labels, make sure to use something that's permanent um, because moisture tends to cause things like pen or pencil to disappear. We have a number of decorative plants around the house, cactuses and whatnot, and Lau really loves flowers. So these are actually all sunflowers. Have our gray stripe, gray stripe, which are the big ones. You could probably even eat the seeds. And then these guys are actually a decorative um, little sunflower, which don't get very big. I'm actually going to put them in this guy. Now this is just the in first initial planting of this specific sunflower. Uh, later on in the spring, when it's a little bit warmer outside, oh, got another one. I will plant a bunch of these outside, alongside a bunch of other pollinator-friendly flowers. Just like that. Now for this gray stripe variety of sunflower, which are actually a much bigger sunflower, this is like a full-size sunflower, so anywhere between you know five to twelve feet, depending on the variety. Um, but I might actually, actually, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to pull one out. Like this, so you can see, there's three in here. Kind of loosen up the dirt. And if I can, I'm going to separate at least two of them, just like that. Okay, you want to have one good plant. I'm going to remove this little guy. I'll just suck life out of the other one. There we go. Now these are going to grow much faster, so have a spot picked out in your garden before you start thinking about sowing these. You can actually, actually most people would say to directly sow these. I'm doing this because I have limited space and because I'm planning to give them some of these away to you people. If you want some of these plants and you live in the Seattle area, uh, send me a message or comment down below and tell me which plants you're interested in and I'll see what I can do for you. I'm going to be repotting hibiscus. Now this is a little bit of an unconventional plant, I don't see a lot of people growing this, but we grew this in 2019 um, and in our experimental garden because we had a half acre market garden. and. We loved it. It was probably some of the best homegrown tea we've ever had. I highly, highly, highly recommend growing your own tea. Oh, how's your battery? Mine's getting low. Charge it, so at least one of your battery. That's still on the floor. I'm giving these about two to three inches of space in between each other. There you have it. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for more notifications for more videos. Peace.